Hi, it's Coach Rory and we're back with some more exciting content for you. Have you ever noticed that the slower you try to run, the harder it is to run with good form? If you missed last week's video, we offered five tips to Masters runners and heard great advice from some of our own veteran runners here at Runners Connect. Today we're going to explore how and why your gait, or running form, changes as you run slower. With the help of Leah Rosenfeld, a professional runner for Under Armour, we will demonstrate three simple form cues to help you maintain solid running form when slowing down. Ready, set, go! <music> In a sport where we're so often obsessed with pacing, PRs, and even Strava segments, it seems counterintuitive to take it easy. If you need a reminder of the benefits of running slow, read our article how running 80% easy could make you 23% faster. This is written by RC contributor John Davis, and I'll put a link to that article in the description below. Anyway, let's assume that we already know slow running makes us faster. It's still in your best interest to keep your form on these slower runs because they not only allow us to recover, but they also hone our efficiency and as a result, prevent injury. Every step, every stride is a chance to ingrain a more fluid running form. Or is it? While I'm on my best behavior with cadence and pelvic tilt during speed workouts, easy days can turn into a shuffle with arms swinging, hunched over, Looking at my phone, trying to find just the right song on Spotify, I rarely think about my form as much as I should. In particular, I notice my cadence tends to be the slowest by far on easy days. Another word for stride rate is cadence. It's measured in strides per minute or SPM. We used to think our cadence needed to stay at 180, thanks in large part to Coach Jack Daniels, but we now understand that cadence will naturally increase or decrease slightly when your pace changes. You can easily determine your own cadence by counting the number of times your left foot hits the ground while running for 30 seconds. Let's imagine that your number was 40. Double that number to get the total for 60 seconds, which would be 80, and then double it again to get the total for both feet, which comes out to 160. Here at Runners Connect, we recommend that runners stay within 2-4% to of their normal cadence during marathon pace. As an example, if your cadence is around 170 while running at marathon pace, then you want to make sure you don't fall below 164 when trying to run super easy or going slow on your recovery days. A cadence of less than 160 strides per minute is typically seen in runners who overstride. It's important that we make a distinction between jogging and running. Jogging, including warming up, is performed at a lower speed and is bound to involve a lower cadence. This doesn't mean you should try to lower your cadence if you don't feel like you need to. However, it does mean that you should increase your cadence if it drops below 2-4% to of your normal range. Hey everyone, I'm Leah Rosenfeld. I'm a coach and a professional runner living and training in Flagstaff, Arizona. While I'm actually running, I don't keep track of my cadence, but I do use a Garmin watch and I upload it just to see kind of the range that I stay in, but I'm not actually counting steps when I'm running. And then for my athletes, we, we talk mostly about running form. And again, if you're moving properly, if your form is pretty sound, then your cadence should also be pretty good. Um, but I don't actually give them a number to follow. I think sometimes if you have the information, I think it's good to know, but it's not an end all be all with your form. Without further ado, here are three form cues to help you maintain a better running form when you're slowing down. Simply speaking, take shorter steps. I think one of the issues runners have when trying to run slower is that they want to maintain their normal stride length. Stride length has a direct correlation to running speed, so it's okay for your stride length to shorten when you're trying to run slow. I have some cues about my foot strike. I just try and keep a, a quick cadence and a tighter form. Like I don't, I try not to overstride or extend my stride too long. I feel like I feel better and more efficient when I have quick steps on the ground. I grew up in a cold climate, so I like to imagine I'm running on an ice patch. On ice, you can't take long loping strides since your foot will slide out behind you. This forces you to take shorter steps. 
It also causes you to land in your midfoot and under your center of mass, hallmarks of proper running technique, to maintain your balance. If imagining yourself running on a sheet of ice doesn't work, try using one of the many metronome apps available on the App Store. Simply set the app to the desired cadence and try to follow the rhythm while running. Over time, the quickened stride will become more natural and you won't need to use the app. Otherwise, you can always just monitor your progress with the 30 second one foot count, which we discussed earlier. Often neglected, your arm swing can actually have a great deal of influence on your running form. Try it sometime when running. You can't make your arms move slower than your legs, or vice versa, as they are perpetually in sync, like the late 90s band. Therefore, if your arms tend to swing side to side, your hips and lower body may follow suit. These minor imbalances over time cause unneeded tension that can lead to injuries later down the road. And because arm swing can help produce a propulsive force, the more you drive your arms forward and back, the more your legs will want to follow suit. Every runner is going to have an individual degree of arm swing, so what I recommend athletes do is visualize brushing their pockets or hips with their thumbs when trying to run slower. This will generally keep your arms from swinging too far forward or back since they have a longer distance to travel. Another way that I teach my athletes to reduce their side-to-side -side arm motion is by having them imagine there's a line drawn down the middle of their midsection and that their hands cannot cross this line. Uh, hands loosey-goosey. So uh, professional runner Nick Willis used to always say, pretend like you're holding a potato chip between your fingers. So they should be that loose when you're running, even when you're sprinting. Normally, we don't recommend that runners focus on hip flexion or driving the leg forward when they run. We believe that the knee lift should be a function of the stretch recoil generated by proper hip extension. Hip extension is basically how far back behind your body your leg travels during push-off. As your leg travels back behind you, it creates a stretch in the hip flexor muscle that just like a rubber band would, releases the stored energy in the hip flexor as you transition to the swing phase. However, when running at a slow pace, it's very difficult to generate hip extension since you don't need to produce a lot of power. As such, you can't take advantage of the stretch reflex. Therefore, you need to more actively focus on driving your leg forward when running slow. Here's how you can do this. Because focusing on knee lift conflicts with the principles of proper technique, I don't think it's something you should actively focus on changing when you're running slower. Focus on landing midfoot and with your foot under your center of mass. For most runners, this will generate proper hip flexion since it's nearly impossible to land this way without lifting your leg. Another way to get a feel for this is by running barefoot as this promotes your natural midfoot strike. However, I do caution you to be careful with this, especially if you have a history of past running injuries. We encourage you to use these three form cues on your next easy run. Do you already use some of these cues when running? Do you have any tips or advice of your own for maintaining good running form when running slow? Share them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next week. Until then, have a great run today.